Okay, that is live now. Good morning. Welcome to today's session. Um, my name is Catherine and I'm an engagement officer at HealthWatch Berry. And in today's live session, we have been joined by John from Dignifying Dementia. Hello. And, <laughs> and I'm just going to share my introductory slides. So I hope you can all see these now. So first of all, I'm just going to go through our live streaming guidelines. Um, so if you're joining us today live, we welcome your questions and comments. Um, but please be sure um, that they are accepting, um, respecting people's boundaries, and don't intentionally um, be rude, because remember, this is um, a public space and everyone can see um, what you're commenting there. Um, don't flood the chat with your questions. Um, we'll get to your questions at the end. Um, so we'll check those um, at the end today. Um, don't self-promote. Um, it's not a space to um, sell your products. Um, I remember um, to keep your language clean and accepting um, as this is a public space um, and we want it to be suitable um, for all ages. So just briefly, um, an overview of today's session. Um, so I'm gonna do a brief introduction um, to Healthwatch Berry in case you haven't come across this before. And then John from Dignifying Dementia um, has a short talk and will be sharing more about what they do in their dementia sessions around Berry, and then we'll have a Q&A hosted by Steph, our volunteer. Um, so if you have any questions, um, please pop them in the comments and we'll get to them at the end. So Healthwatch, who are we? Uh, what do we do? Um, so we're your local health and social care champion. Um, we are Healthwatch Berry and we cover the Berry area and that's all six townships um, of Berry. Um, and our main aim is to make health and social care um, services better for the people who use them. And the way we do that is by listening to your experiences. Um, the main way we do that is through our surveys. Um, so our latest survey is on young people's mental health. Um, so if that is applicable to you, um, please fill out that survey. Um, but you can also contact us anytime. Um, to share your experiences um, and I'll share our contact details um, in a little bit. Um, another thing that we do, um, provide you with information advice. Um, so that's what we're doing today, um, sharing information about dignifying dementia, um, but you can contact us anytime um, if you want information about a service um, that you're unsure about. So just to expand on ways we can support you as an individual, um, we can provide you with information and advice um, about local dementia services or other local groups that you might want to attend. Um, we can help you navigate the health and social care system, and that's especially useful if you've been newly, newly diagnosed with a condition and you're unsure of who to contact. Um, most importantly, we can listen to your experiences of using health and care services um, in Barrie. So I'm going to share our contact details briefly um, in case you want to jot them down now, but I have popped them in the description of this video um, so you can check back there um, later. Um, so our phone number is 0161253 um, We do have a WhatsApp, uh, which is plus 4473 77 44 44 46. Um, our email is info at healthwatchberry.co.uk. Um, we're on most social media channels. Um, Twitter and Instagram is at HealthWatchBerry. Um, this is our Facebook page if you're viewing today. Um, please give it a like if you haven't already um, so you can stay up to date with our live sessions. And we also post a lot of information on here about other um, local groups and events as well. And we also have our website, which is healthwatchberry.co.uk. And we post information there very regularly. Um, about local services and groups, and also information about um, vaccine clinics as well. We keep that quite up to date, um, so please check that out um, if you're able to later today. 
um, our YouTube channel, Health Watch Berry. Um, I'll be uploading this um, live stream there later today. And we also have recordings of all our other live sessions on there as well, um, if you want to check those out. Um, so now I'm going to hand you over to John, who's going to share more about dignifying dementia. Hello. Um, dignifying dementia was set up in September 2018 when most of the dementia groups in Bury were cancelled. Um, it's been set up by people who care about dementia, generally ex carers or people who are still carers. Um, obviously, lockdown was difficult for us, but we're now up running again. Um, since January, we have two group. Well, we, we run four different groups. There are two groups that run each week. One is every Tuesday at the Welcome In 61 Berry Old Road, Presswich M45 6TA. It runs from one till three. Um, that's what we've termed our activity group. And we play games, we do puzzles, we have quizzes. When we've built numbers up, we will also be doing crafts, but at the moment it's a bit too expensive to set up a craft session for the three or four people who attend. Um, last week we played dominoes and there was a lot of talk um, about how lockdowns affected people. Today we're playing musical bingo, which for those who've not done it before, instead of having numbers on your bingo card, you have song titles and we play songs. We have a lot of fun guessing the song title, guessing who's singing and singing along to it. And the songs that we use are the same songs that we use for our Wednesday group. Our Wednesday group is called Merry Melodies and it's a singing group. Um, there's massive benefits to singing for people living with dementia. Um, if you ever want to Google singing and dementia, there are some incredibly moving videos. Um, on a Wednesday, we're at St John's Church on Kirkley Street, Tottington, BL83NJ. What happens at the groups are people turn up, we get people chatting, we provide a hot drink, cake or biscuits, depending what we've managed to pick up. Um, we then do the activity on a Tuesday. As I say, it'll be musical bingo today. Tomorrow in Tottington, we have a list of 51 songs and we'll probably sing 15 to 20 of them. Depends how much people want to talk, depends how people take things. We always have a break in the middle for another drink and more biscuits and cake. And we end roughly around three o'clock. Um, the volunteers, because everything we do is through volunteers, the volunteers are always there at the end of a session and will happily talk to anyone about any concerns regarding dementia. We will generally signpost you somewhere, um, but we're always available to talk. The other two things that we do is monthly, we run what we call the carers evening, where we invite carers to come and join us, generally in a pub with a restaurant. We have a meal and we talk. Um, conversations go all over the place to things we've been watching on television, to ideas of how you can support a loved one living with dementia. Um, and one of the things I love is you'll see a couple of people talking and one will say, you can't believe what my mum did last night, explains it. And the other person goes, oh, my auntie did that the other week. And suddenly this concern becomes a shared concern and is no longer as bad. As I say, most of our volunteers are carers or ex-carers. So do have an understanding. Um, the final thing, oh, I should say our next meal is next week on Thursday the 10th. And we're at the Bluebell on Manchester Road in Whitefield 
And we are doing two this month because we struggle to get January and February organised. And on Thursday, the 29th of March, we'll be at the Robin Hood in Tottington. We like to move it around as much because we know that to leave someone with dementia, people only usually want to be away a short time. Uh, our meals are always seven o'clock start. You can stay as long as you want. You can arrive when you want. Um, one of our volunteers is usually there between seven and nine. As I say, the third thing that we do is a dementia awareness talk um, where we talk about a little bit about what dementia is. And then we try and share good practice. Um, the two main people involved in dignifying dementia have been running these groups for we think about 22 years between us. So we've picked up lots of advice from people which we like to share because if something has worked for one person, we hope it'll work for others. And it, it's simple things like, don't ask too many questions. If you're talking to someone who is already confused and you ask them lots of questions, you add to the confusion. And the example I like to use is, I know that Gladys always drinks coffee. Why should I ask her, do you want tea or coffee? Which is what we normally do, or would you like a drink? And it's the ideal way, in my opinion, to do it is, Gladys, should we have a cup of coffee together? It, at the Gladys at the front grabs their attention we tend to talk with names at end of sentences unless you're a salesman which is part of my background you put the person's name at the front which grabs their attention and you remove the worry about answering a question and that very briefly is what we do we also have a mailing list which we try to send out as much relevant information as we can you can contact us on dignifyingdementia at gmail.com. Um, the final bit we have is a Facebook page, which we use particularly through lockdown. And we shared on there um, a thing called On This Day in History, which is a, an, a, sadly an American publication but it's all things about that day, a lot of which is relevant to people in this country. Um, and we, we shared lots of games. So for people who couldn't get out because there's nowhere to go and they were looking after someone, there was an activity to do. So it'd be things like, um, we, we do a lot of A to Z games where I'll give you a topic and you have to go through the alphabet, giving me something that fits the topic. So things like girls' names, I'll start with Anne. The next person online goes Barbara. Next one, Carol. Um, and I know it sounds a simple thing, but it does pass the time away for people. And that very shortly is what we do. And I'm happy to take any questions from anybody. Thank you, thank you, John. That was very, very moving to hear that. Uh, obviously, I, I really do appreciate what you do for people in the community affected by dementia. I've just got a few questions. Um, do you receive any funding from like the councils, or is it all self-funded? We are very lucky we've generally been very successful in the the pitches that Barry have been running um partly because i don't do sensible pitches and i put something silly in which i think gets us more votes um we have just been awarded nearly five thousand by Barry council and that's about trying to get people with dementia more active so we encourage movement our singing group and we are when the weather improves going to organize some short walks which are likely to be in Heaton Park and Tottington 
we are also a charity um one of the co-ops charities of the year so if anyone is at shops at the co-op and they'd like to nominate dignify and dementia that will bring us a bit more money in um and like most small groups we're looking around everywhere to see who's offer funding thank you and you also mentioned that you had um a sales background so what inspired you to set up this dignifying dementia group um it's a very long answer to that quite simply i worked for the company who ran the dementia groups i left because i wasn't happy with something that was going on i was working self-employed running groups for care homes running chair-based exercise when they were cancelled i was approached by carers and we sort of got together and formed this because as i say i've i've been a carer in the past and it's a very lonely place and there's not a great deal out there for people living with dementia at the moment it's much worse since the lockdowns so it was purely about wanting to support those who are carers now and those living with dementia. And, and with you talking about like lockdown and stuff, so what sort of challenges have there been for people with dementia and the carers are? I think the, the biggest one is one we've all felt, that when you can't go and meet people, you become isolated. Isolation has clearly become a much bigger issue for those living with dementia in the last two years. And my opinion is that there's a lot more people looking for diagnosis at the moment because their symptoms have worsened through the last two years because they've lacked this um, stimulation. We, we, a lot of what we do may look stupid, but it's experience of knowing the little things we can do which stimulate people's thinking and, and their brain. So that, that's why we came to it. And are these sessions, like you say, you have the two um, weekly sessions and then like you have the meals, are they very well attended? I can imagine they would be well attended. They were very well attended before the first lockdown. We think we were seeing 50 different people a week. We were running three groups then. Um, a lot of the people who are coming are no longer living in the community. And at the moment, we're not getting any care homes coming to join us. Um, we've had a first couple of people say, oh, I'm running a care home. Can we come and look at what you do? Um, and there's definitely been a delay in getting diagnosis for people over the last two years, which I think we all know the NHS has struggled. We are expecting a lot more diagnosis to go through, so we're hoping to improve the numbers. Uh, last week at the activity group, I think we had, oh, we had 10 at both groups last week, which is our best of the year, um, but it's nowhere near the 30, 40 people that we've had in the past. So how can people get involved? Like how, how obviously we want to increase awareness. So how can people like get involved? You know, if you want to come along to the groups or anything. Just turn up. We Just turn up. We don't ask for referrals. We don't insist that people tell us what their dementia diagnosis is because although there are a hundred types or roughly of dementia they are slightly different but they all affect the people in the same way that brain cells are being killed um, so people can just turn up you can turn up for five minutes at the beginning five minutes at the end we are very very relaxed in what we do and um, we know that one of the biggest problems we have is getting information back out to people again we used to have posters up in most gps but over the lockdown, all that's disappeared. And a lot of GP surgeries still are not having many face-to-face -face 
appointments. Um, we made contact yesterday with the CCG who run the GP practices and they're now going to advertise us. Um, so things are getting better for us in the way we can get stuff out, but we still struggle telling people. I, if you have dementia, you're not likely to be spending lots of time looking at notice boards, yep. going online. Um, we are open to anything people can suggest to improve. Thank you, John. I have no more questions, but I, I know that there's a lady on here today that's just had a family member um, diagnosed with dementia. So I don't know if Shirley's got any questions or any, any of the virtual audience, so I'll pass you on to them. Thanks, Steph. Yes, I've, I've got a couple of questions for John. Um, right, you, you mentioned that you don't need to pre-book for your activity sessions and things. Do Would the carers need to book for your uh, monthly uh, meals and get together given yeah, there could be ask, limited numbers? We ask people to let us know because if we book a table for 10 and 20 people turn up, we've got a problem. Um, and we do tend to use places where who have been helpful to us in the past um it really the next couple are going to be suck it and see sessions because i think we were getting 12 people maybe before the lockdowns um i think i've got eight people coming next week um but people can turn up to anything we do and we'll try and accommodate them and how would they do that, John? Do they email you at the uh, email, Dignifying Dementia yeah, at gmail.com? That's our preferred way um, because we don't have a designated phone line hmm. because we can't afford it. Um, or we, we decided it wasn't the best use of our money. Um, but anyone emails us, go on our Facebook page. You can ask questions on there. It is a closed group, mainly because... I think you said it before, people come on trying to sell things, which just didn't seem to be what we wanted. We want to be there to support, not to provide a sales market. But most people, we will let onto the group. We do say that we want people who have a connection to dementia in Berry, but that's all. And do you run uh, completely independently, John, or do you link with other dementia services, uh, statutory or non, or other voluntary groups? At the moment, we believe we're the only group still running in Berry, um, so we are on our own. I would love to work with anyone. I think joint working has got to be the way forward. There's very limited funding. And I, we, as a group, will work with anybody who shares our values. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Has anyone in the audience got any questions? Um, we just had one comment from someone called Jill, who just says, well done. Um, so that's all for today. Thank you. Um, so if we're all done here, I'll end the live. Um, thank you so much, John, for joining us today. Um, and if anyone, <laughs> if anyone missed um, any of the live stream today, you can catch up later because I'll upload the recording. Um, thank you to Shirley and Steph for contributing as well. I hope you all have a very nice rest of your day and enjoy the sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>